TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are live, but by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. Slight little warning screen, just in case. We also got Patreon. For, uh, that's where we watch stuff that you can't watch on YouTube, and we do post five days a week. I think it's like $3.80 for y'all to join. Y'all could do it. If not, it's cool. Just be on Twitch.com with us. Username's at the bottom of the screen. This is the mm, This is the M U R D E R of Katie Kenyon. I don't know if I've seen this, but I don't think I have. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Lads Army is next. Talk to me though. <laughs> Police who are searching for the missing Burnley mum, Katie Kenyon, believe that she is no longer alive and have launched a murder investigation. Police, Police were, were questioning, questioning a 50-year-old man on suspicion of kidnap. Has now been further arrested and is being questioned in connection with murdering the mother of two. R.I.P. Katie. Police arrive at Andrew Burfield's house. April 22nd, 2022. Katie Kenyon's car is parked at the address. Katie's family raises concerns and go to confront Burfield. These guys outside are concerned about Katie. Do you know where she is? Yeah, yeah, no, I don't. What's up with you? Uh, I got a text at almost two. Today? Yeah, saying I came to your house. What I again to my shoulder. So From Katie? Yeah. Right. Uh, but we're now picking the kids up from school and came on. The, the keys are down behind the door. So we came. Is this her husband? Or boyfriend? We went to, to the keys behind the door. School and came on. The, the keys are down behind the door. So we came into to the keys behind the door. So she's yeah. been. Sorry, back to the item she's dropped. Do we have a time frame of when we think she'll drop us? I don't mind kids up at all, mate. School at all, mate. Getting back this morning. Not my kids. Okay. I, mean, I will probably give her about a quarter past now. Where do you think she'll be now? Oh, she's obviously driven a car down here, actually. Yeah, she's parked at Paul's Gate now. You've got to watch it up from there. And they are concerned that Andrew Burfield may know the whereabouts of their loved one. And he distanced himself completely, says, I've not seen Katie, I have no idea what you're talking about, nothing to do with it, I have no idea. Um, he even goes on to the, to the extreme of showing them on an iPhone 8 phone and showing them a series of messages that are purported to have come from Katie. The family equally will say, we've received a load of messages purported to be from Katie, but we are certain and adamant they have not come from Katie. It's 2022, they can ping that phone and see where it was exactly anyway, at the time of those messages. She told me she wanted to walk. She what, sorry? She told me, she, she said she dropped the car off this morning. And it's done. Before that message came through, um, that's what you want to do today. And that were at uh, half one. She put just out on a walk. You? The contents of the message, the makeup of the messages, inside the messages, the language, the grammar, the punctuation. Spelled the doctor's name wrong. Yeah. All completely inconsistent with how Katie would write ordinarily. Will you just try ringing a number for us? Is, is the phone still on? I don't know. I've not been ringing it. Is, it. is it ringing or is it going to voicemail? Or? Going to voicemail. Hi, Abbas, I'm at work. Listen, I've just got your message. Will you, will you please ring me? I'm a bit worried. Just ring me. You don't have to do this. I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about the money. I'm not worried about the money. Just ring me, please. I love you. CCC. If you need to go lucky for Katie now, where would you go? First Shows place, Katie you know. walking to Burfield's house. Pendalil. So, how would she get there? Would she walk? 
after dropping the keys off here for the car, you'd seriously think she'd walk to Pendle from here from around two o'clock this afternoon. Now, what would make you think the police wouldn't assume that you would give her a ride? So, are you concerned, Kate? Yeah. So, how come, have you reported any of this? No, no, because it's only just happened. It's, it's, I've had a sister right. But you said the message come at half two. Yeah, yeah you, you, so the message come through at quarter to two. Yeah. And uh, you've replied pretty much straight away. I know, I'm just wondering, because you said it's only just happened, but it's happened at like two o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, but I, 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 I picked the kids up. I came here at four. To be honest with you, I thought it was just like, you know, I don't know. So you weren't concerned? I were, but I were, I, I, I were, if you will. Okay. Uh, Kate's seen entering yeah, the uh, first house. Is this out of character for her to just disappear like that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how come you thought if she were just being silly, but now you're concerned? So, he's, she's asked him to look after... Officers question Burfield's version of... Let me just make myself a little bit smaller, man. Best editor on the platform the kids so he's she's asked him to look after kids um, she, she's gonna go away and get herself so I'll make herself a better person when she comes back it's gonna be everything that they've got to do yeah he, but he's given her six grand that she says she's gonna use as payment to get herself into a real place and get herself sorted despite him having taken to court saying you know, because she owes him six grand he's then given him six grand but he's had these messages from before, just before two today. But he's not reported them. He sent messages about saying that what the hell was going on here. It's weird. But he's not reported them. This thing that point, he voices his concern. Yeah. So that launched obviously into the inquiry. Um, they then do some quick work around AMPR and different things, and the phone cell site to see where Katie's phone's going. That shows right. the phone going right up towards Gisborne Forest. So when we know the phone's going up to Gism Gisman Forest, it's up there for a period of probably around about 51 minutes. And then on the AMPR data and the cameras and the CCTV work that's been done, we now know that Katie is in that vehicle when it travels up to Gisman Forest. The concerning factor is when the vehicle comes back, She's Katie's not really present in that vehicle, but her phone is. The last sighting of Katie Kenyon was around half past nine on Friday morning when a woman matching her description was seen getting into a silver transit van with a man in Burnley. That's the immediate concern. That's massively... In that's the thing. That's what I be trying to say, man. People be doing the dumbest stuff and thinking they can get away with it. In the UK, bro, there's AMPR, there's cameras everywhere in here too. But like they, the technology is too much. For this stuff to even be possible. Consistent with what Burfield has said in his initial assertion of, I've no idea what you're talking about, I've never seen her. So then subsequently, when we go and speak to him again, as part of the missing from home inquiry, it was like a hot day, middle of April, um, and the police have gone in to speak to him, and the house is described as being like an inferno. It's red hot. Um, it turns out he's actually got his log burner raging. And the decision is made to lock him up on suspicion of kidnap. So it's locked him up on suspicion of kidnap. Um, <clears throat> and we then start to do urgent interviews with him. Those urgent interviews, he still maintains the denies not knowing where Katie is. It's a very simple question, Andrew. Can you tell me where Katie is? I can't. I don't know. You don't know? Okay. So is there any clue you can give us as to where she might be? I did give you a clue early on. Um, I think she's a, a rehab centre. A rehab centre? Or some sort of clinic. Right, okay. And where would that be? I haven't got a clue. So we can confirm Katie was his girl? Like, they were seeing each other? We start to launch a massive inquiry. And she had an issue with either alcohol or drugs and he's trying to say she asked him to watch her kids while she went to rehab which doesn't seem plausible because she has a caring family that is concerned about her whereabouts that she could have dropped the kids to if that was the case but okay the purpose being to try and find Katie safe and well on the belief potentially she is still safe and well up in the forest 
forest. You can imagine it's like about a 25 mile radius around Gisborne Forest, it is massive. So massive operation in terms of um, air support, helicopters, planes, all kinds of things with heat source cameras trying to search the forest. We've got multiple search teams up there, underwater search, mountain rescue, you name it, everybody Cadaver is up dogs. in that forest, cadaver dogs, everybody's up there. But even though we've got all these vast amount of resources, we were sort of conscious through running this at the beginning that the, the area which we've got, to, we've got to sort of search through is so vast, it's almost a bit like Neil and Haystacks, we need to narrow that down. Hence we did the sort of significant media appeal to see if we get any witnesses that could help us narrow that process. What we then find is that one witness comes forward who says, we think we've seen that vehicle and it's part of one of the search areas that we were looking to address and search so we could prioritise that search area. Equally from the media appeal, what also was identified was that Burfield is a builder and we find that um, he'd been working, doing some building work and address <coughs> They've said, I've had a weird conversation with him, I've had a weird conversation on Saturday the 23rd of April and it's, re it's weird in this context. He's turned up kind of at about quarter past eight in the morning, yeah. which was unexpected. Didn't expect him to be here at quarter past eight, but I've walked, unusual. yeah, unusual. It only works when the kids are yeah. at school, in school run time. So yeah. weekend, quarter past eight, yeah. isn't what he does. Do you yeah. So they're kind of like, well, fair enough, he's still doing some work here. They enter into an unusual conversation around his inquiring as to when the bins are likely to be taken and when his bin day. Um, at which point they just thought, a bit odd, but thought nothing of it. The media appeal comes in and then they realise Katie's missing. They're aware that Katie's ex-partner of Andrew Burfield. Ex? Thought, well, why is he asking about the bins? When they've checked in their bin, they then find that underneath, buried under their refuge, is another bag with bags within bags that contain a pair of train uh, flip-flops that seem to match those of Katie's visually. What we now know is in those bags also was a number of heavily blood-stained bags. Um, so at which point then we've thought and believed they potentially could be Katie's. And that's the first time we believe potentially she'd come to some sort of harm. Definitely Katie's. And him being just a dummy, why would you even go ask them people that question? To what degree, we still didn't know. Uh, but we were certainly concerned that potentially come to harm. So we are fast-tracked all those bags into it. Before we get any further, 10 minutes in, RIP to Katie. I'm sorry for your loss, the family. Um... There's nothing that Katie could have done to get this man that angry to take her life. That is not his decision. That's crazy. I, I, I'm curious to know, like, did he give an explanation? They're trying to get them to determine... There's no amount of anger. ...cators or otherwise. Um, <clears throat> and we continue the interview process with Burfield. I believe that you want to speak to us today. Um, so I'm just going to hand it over to you to tell us what you want to say. We parked the van up and we went to our, our site, which we always go to. Um, I say always, we've been twice, we've been twice. Right. Um, and that's, that's, that's where she still is. That's where she still is. Okay. The point he's changed his rhetoric completely. So from previously he's not seen Katie, now he has seen Katie. He accepts he's taken her up to the, the forest area and he accepted the killing of Katie, but he did it on the basis of an accidental killing. So we don't know what, what went wrong. You're aiming no. at the tree and... No, I can't even say I slipped, fell, I had nothing. It's, I just don't even know what went wrong. It's just stupid, isn't it? But I'll never do that. It's so much so stupid. Okay. It's obviously cat. How close was she from you? About eight feet, ten feet. There's no help there, you know, there's nothing. No. No people. No signal on the phone, they can't carry her. So the boy thing can't carry your own girlfriend. Weak one. Talk me, talk me through these next seconds then. This has happened now. I just don't know what I'm doing, honestly. I don't, I'm, I'm I, it just does. So you was throwing an axe and Katie was standing close enough to be hit? Why was she not standing next to you? Why would she go on the other. Like, 
Talk to me. Hold it, hold it, just go too much straight ahead. Mm. And now? I just don't know what I'm doing, honestly, God. I'm, I'm hold it, hold it, just go too much straight ahead. Mm. <laughs> um, so, following that, he then says, in his interview account, wasn't it? He says he's gone back to his van. Mm-hmm. When he gets back to his van, um, he has gone in there to consider about whether or not, oh my God, I might have to kill myself take now. I'll take my own life, as you say, because I'm concerned about what's occurred. He has a bit of a reflection moment, thinks, you know what, I've not got my finances in order, um, and plus I've not brought my nail gun with me. Um, perhaps I need to um, give myself a bit of time to get everything in order. So he then makes the decision to go back to the actual scene, which is approximately 70 metres away from the road, mm-hmm. um, at which point then makes the decision to dig a shallow grave place Katie within the grave and then cover it up again and leave in order to get his finances in order. So that is the assertion that he has given in that interview. The thing is, Andrew, you've told us a lot over the last few days, haven't you? And you've told us a lot, certainly today, a lot of information. And a so lot- now he's trying to make it look like manslaughter and that he was so torn apart by what he's done, he was going to take his own life and alive himself? A lot of it just does not add up. Okay. It doesn't. And ultimately, we don't believe you of what you've said. Okay. But do not believe that this has been an accident. This is about your control and your over over Katie, and you're losing the control. One hundred percent. That there been plans to go up to Scotland. She even says that you had said that you were going to buy a house, and that you've got a portfolio of a number of houses. That relevant to this, I don't care. The way it's relevant is because it's about you, Andrew, and the fact that you have told lies, you tell lies to women, and you're manipulating these relationships to control, and you, you fantasise about a life that you would want to have. That's not a crime, is it? That's not a crime. Is it? Because okay. we're building to the fact that this... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, this, it's this crazy start to an origin story hasn't just happened on Friday as you have tried to account for this morning that what we're saying is that hasn't happened okay it's you have not dug that hole in the 10 minutes that you have said to us it might have been longer right okay I don't know how long we were there do I all I'm saying is you dug the hole that day we know how long you're there and you're not long enough 51 minutes Katie herself even had her concerns about you. She even told her own sister. And basically what she said to her sister was, if I go missing, it will be him, meaning you, who's done it. Dang. So Katie knew what was going down and still pursued or still... The difficulty we've got is negating the assertion that this was an accident without finding Katie. We need Katie in order to, one, bring closure to the family. Two, um, for Katie as well, we don't want her to be left somewhere in a shallow grave. But evidentially, we also need to get Katie's body oh. to confirm the gay that it's an accidental act through pathology. We- so the hole was done days before. Which clearly we haven't got. It's from prison, okay. They still hadn't had her by this point? search parameters indicated from a, uh, from other dog handlers um, that we thought they potentially identified a shallow grave. Yeah, where the witness had seen the van. Yeah. His van's got quite a distinctive panel. I don't know if you remember on the side it had a bit of work done, so it had quite a distinctive panel, which is how this guy would be really adamant about where it had been parked and really specific about time yeah. and that it was that van. So yeah. that linked in with what the GMP dog handlers and our pulses were seeing at the scene. Okay, was quite a strong hope that we'd, we'd found her or found where she would be. 
really no no words were spoken even he really didn't say anything no one said anything he's got his solicitor with him your other risk with it is escape as well isn't it so you, you've got there's, there's lots of injury to the team there's so many risks involved with that but actually our priority was for the family to find Katie yeah, this is risky. you have to kind of run those risks to, to get the result we need this is where they pick things ok this ok as we were hopeful we found her there was a couple of things that were unusual as well weren't it about that grave in terms of unusual like for example it, if you are to place a body inside a grave the void the size of one of us inside a grave you would expect to create a, a mound subsequently you wouldn't have a perfectly flat surface this had a perfectly flat surface it was finished impeccably to a point where you would not even realize a grave was there yeah. if you're going to listen to his account and you know that he's been there for 51 minutes if you're going to dig a hole in order to put somebody into as part of a grave you would expect that was done in haste mm. you'd expect you would dig a hole very very quickly not taking time and precision over it what he has actually done he's actually taken layers so he's took a layer of topsoil a layer of soil put them on the side a layer of clay put it on the side so actually when you start to excavate there's no difference in the two types of soil so this part here looks like the same as this looks like it's been undisturbed because it's been layered back exactly as it's been taken away exactly so there's Top no anomalies and then the moss so bro he was a construction worker, so he was familiar with how to dig up earth and, and do these things. So this was premeditated. I mean, pre-pre, not done like out of anger, out of a fit of rage, or out of, oh my God. He, he had planned this. Like you said in the chat, he had done the whole way before. Branches and, a, and weirdly a tree root is gone right over the top. If you were doing it to the precision that he's done it and actually left it so impeccably, then how would you ever, you know, how would you ever have done that in the time available? It's just not feasible. Wow. Obviously we're all aware of the position we're in around this job. The force major investigation team's up. Oh. Obviously we're all aware of the position we're in around this job in terms of what we've got for um, the investigation. As we know, Burfield has claimed his attack on Katie to be an accidental act. So the way I want to structure this today in terms of this briefing is we're going to start first and foremost around any updates we've got from a defence perspective that may be different to what he's previously asserted during his police interview. And then I'll cover it around three main headings. One, what evidence we've got over the last few weeks around the actual act of killing. Two any evidence we've gathered around the premeditation and three, the actions post Katie being killed. So what we actually know in relation to that and what's become apparent around those three things. So that's the way I want to structure today's briefing, if we can. I think on the day that Katie's killed, 51 minutes is what we talked about. Well, if you think about what he's actually suggesting, I think, and I have to get you can maybe confirm me and correct me on this, I understood it to be maybe up to about six. Keep in mind, this documentary is done by the Lancashire Police. Or it's on their page. Or it's on the Lancashire Police's page. But it's the drive from the last CCTV site up to the actual place where we know the vehicle was, was parked from a witness perspective. So six minutes on two ways of that journey, knocks another 12 minutes off, takes us down to 39 minutes. Then you've got the walk from where the vehicle was parked, the 60 metres into the forest, which we expect Kate is done in flip-flops. Which, And then you've got the fact his suggestion is that um, from there, he's walked back to the van, where he's obviously had this moment of thinking about what he's going to do, about the fact he's killed her, whatever's going on in the forest area, setting a picnic blanket out, um, chopping firewood, end up killing her, administer first aid, 
then walk back 60 metres back to the van and then decide he's not got a nail gun there to obviously harm himself and then come to the conclusion he's going to dig a grave and walk back again another 60 metres, your time frame is just collapsing down all the time to a point I would argue, yeah. based on his account, you've not even got 30 minutes. And the, con the contrast for that is that we've got the support unit staff who were saying it takes nearly an hour just for them to fill in the grave, which was not dug like a hole. So if you're going to dig this hole, we've said this all the way through and consistently, you dig the hole, you do it in, in panic, he has not, he's layered it. The archaeology says he has layered this. He's a, it's not a quick job, this. It's not something that's even feasible within there. And on that note, Simon, I've not actually read it yet, but I know we've got Ali's statement from an archaeologist. I haven't read it in detail, I've only skimmed through it. But that's pretty much what it says, that the different levels yeah. of soil have been taken out and, in her opinion, put separately yeah. rather than just taken out in a mass as in you, you're just frantically digging a hole and the top of it then has been taken out in as if it like bits of turf or whatever so it can then be laid back flat over the top you add into that as well as Dave that's, described in one of the other briefings about that's the route insane. that's yep. part cut and bent back um, he does suggest in his interviews that he's a good digger well I'm paraphrasing when asked about that he does say I'm, I'm good at digging so I could do it in that time yep. but I don't think he could do it in the way it's being described um, certainly. The precision as well, because it's, it's, it's narrow, isn't it? It's narrow at the feet end, it's wider at the head end, it's deeper at the head end. There was something I read, it looked like it might have had to be made bigger. Yeah. I think, which is a, an interesting, and that again from Ali's statement was that maybe the first hole that was dug wasn't big enough to fit her in, so there's been some further digging that's been done at some stage afterwards. It's left it tidy enough, hasn't it, that it yeah. took, we didn't find it. No. Moving that on a little bit, witness perspective, anything we've got new witness-wise? Anything that you've that's, said, Simon, reading? So do we think he was that good at digging holes or he studied this before he did it? Regular people don't even think about stuff like that. That's um, There's lots of stuff around. We've got quite a few of his ex-partners, which is interesting that the, the he's quite a controlling and a Walter Mitty type character, it seems, with a, an awful lot of his ex-partners promising this and not actually going through um, and, and meeting people in all sorts of varieties of mediums. He's, he's on dating sites and online and sort of dropping into people's messages on Facebook and Instagram and stuff into, hello, how are you? And there's this talk about quite a lot of inappropriate talk on single ladies that he's gone doing building work for, hello, where's your husband and are you single and this, that and the other. So he looks like he's continually out and about looking for potential, uh, partners is probably the wrong word, but um, women that he can form relationships with. Um, and he's, he has, there's a couple that I've read where he's taken money off them, um, one of whom has gone through the same process with him that he's done with Katie as in they've served a letter on him from the court saying I've given you this money and you owe, it, owe me it back whether that's what's given him the idea to do it but yeah um, he's, he's, it's certainly um, that that is that's coming out from a perspective of, of what sort of a person he was <laughs> evidencing First of all, I thought this was a made-up word <laughs> by this generation, but this is the people. This is a real all right. So on the eighth of March, the debt company received an email from Katie saying that Burfield's going to pay the balance. That they. He's going to pay the debt off, she tells him on the 8th. And then on the 9th, he's sending that, saying, put more pressure on her to, um, to get the money off her. To the previous one, and we've got messages being sent between the two of them, and she, he's yeah. saying, I'll sort it for you, don't worry. Yeah. And then he's going straight to doing that. I think that we need that in personally, because you, you're giving him, you're showing yeah. what an evil. Yeah, he's really playing with yeah. red, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. 
and then that message comes up from her saying I don't know what he's going to do next when he is doing all this stuff that she doesn't know about behind the scenes so on the 25th he rings them to request an update on the case he stated that Miss Kenyon's offered has had been to his address giving him abuse and asking why the £200 pay so he's then playing the other side again as soon as uh, This dude, y'all gotta search. Y'all gotta go through the missing persons. He might have did this before. This is this is diabolical. This ain't adding up. It's all control and tip. In terms of the sort of level of premeditation, how long he's been thinking of murdering her for. So we know that she goes missing and he's killed on the twenty second of April. What becomes really clear for and us, and that's what I'm saying. Like. First of all, how deep was the hole? They said he done, he said in the beginning it was a shallow grave. How deep was the hole? Y'all talking about there were several different layers of dirt. First and foremost, I thought there was just soil. I thought there was one level of dirt and I knew it. There's obviously more. He dug through seven layers of earth. Um, and and, and y'all saying that he did, it takes time to do this. So in the 51 minutes that they was up there, what happened in that time? Or did he go back and continue to do... You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like there's a lot of stuff I'm missing, but there's also 20 minutes left. So let me... Is those messages that I touched on before that the family will say, Katie categorically has not written. So she was looking at... Uh, they were saying because language, grammar, punctuation, yeah. as you said, spelling the simple things like the dog incorrectly. When you actually look at that through a different lens, what we now know is... Those messages that have been sent to her children, to other family members, so multiple different people that they're saying not come from Katie, they've been written and have been produced by Burfield in about, well, certainly two to three weeks prior to Katie's death. So what we've looked at is when we've seized his iPhone, what we're able to establish members so multiple different people that they're saying not come from Katie. They've been written and have been produced by Burfield in about, well, certainly two to three weeks prior to Katie's death. So what we've looked at is when we've seized his iPhone, what we're able to establish is that on the 17th of March, 2022, if you look at your iCloud account, you know your notes section of your phone, which people might put the shopping list or something similar in there. These messages, and they are vast in nature, they're like really long messages these, they had already been created on the 17th of March. By the 4th of April. Wow. Bro had planned this a month plus, uh, probably more than a month before? Those messages existed in exactly the format that they were actually subsequently sent. So what we believe is, when he's murdered Katie, he has brought her phone back with him in order to use that, in order to send messages to suggest that she was still alive. And he used to, in order to do that, he's transferred messages from his own phone onto Katie's phone that he can onwardly send to other people. But the most chilling part of that is, that's like, what, certainly 18 days prior to Katie's murder. So, it's clearly premeditated. Yeah. What a creep! I don't, like that's that's all right. That's creepy. That's literally creepy that people could be plotting on you like that for that long, and that's real life. I feel like Floridians, Florida, Florida people do that to you. Chicago people do that too. Like that's that's what backdooring you is. You plot on me, plot on me, then do something behind like do backdoor me. That's that's crazy. People in Florida be pretend to be your friend for two, three months, just to just to snake you, and that's weird behavior. This is weird to me. This for me is quite important, and this needs to be evidenced in full. Um, and basically, what this is on the first of April, there's 28 phone activity records that show the device has been used to access notes. When you think about writing a note, 28 notes on one day is quite significant. Um, yeah, it is. You know, so I, I think that in itself is quite important, knowing that we know on the second and fourth the key dates mm. that we're using in evidence, the key notes we're using yeah. in evidence are edited on those days. Yeah. And then the next bit, so the. Trying to 
to stay professional, but ma'am, listen. The WhatsApp message you sent between Katie Kane and Andrew Burford from um, 1st to 4th, 9.37 to 11.24. Make reference to him having a way to help her and that she'll see soon enough. Because I think, yeah, that that 28 phone activity records on on the 1st of the 4th probably sits us somewhere within the sequence as a slide just to say yeah and 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 at the same time she's she's stressed if you read the messages at the same time she's stressed and he's basically saying don't worry i i, I can help you I, I'm, I'm on with it i'm actually on with it now he's like you'll see soon enough katie and he's, it's quite eerie when you read it like at the same time he's creating and editing these notes yeah so i think he's, he is as he says piling the pressure on her to make sure that she is beholden to him and she's not just going to cut off contact and leave him because he's got this plan in place that he started back on the 17th so he needs to keep contact with her in order to put that plan in place this is ridiculously yeah. weird yeah. I just can't I'm else is, is about reeling her in and then, then stressing her and then reeling her back in again and stressing her in And you see, that's why, see, take, take, this is why I don't play with people. You know what I'm saying? The one time I feel you do me wrong, you out the door because you're not finna wheel me in, then stress me out again, then wheel me in and stress me out at the end. And then I'm, you know what I'm saying? And then something crazy happened. No, no, no. You play once, you're done. <laughs> so seven weeks prior to trial, we want to run through the whole chronology of, uh, of the events that have taken place and associated evidence just to check one for accuracy to check if there's any anomalies in there because it needs to be correct and accurate and secondly to check if there's any sort of new developments that have taken place that would inform that position from an SLP or sequence of events perspective so that's the purpose of today um, he has now accepted that he has been um, at the forest the day before he claims around that that was down to um, he's had his brakes done in his car, he's bending his brakes in, he's travelled up to the forest area to walk his dog. The reason that becomes so significant for me is a number of different things. So we already knew that he'd been up to the forest area, but we also now know is that when they've done the excavation work around the grave, time we know this, but what we've also done around the excavation work around the grave is we find two different sets of footwear at the base of the grave. So one of those is a block, one of those is a zigzag. Now, Straight away, that indicates that either a number of different hypotheses sit around those. One is that two people have been um, to the grave, as it could have been two people involved in the commission of defence. Now, that's largely eliminated straight off because he accepts he's the only person there. That's consistent with the CCTV. Everything okay, else that's taken okay. place is, that is negated to a large extent, which then begs the question why two sets of footwear? So, you're going to have that for one of two reasons. Either you've worn two different sets of footwear during the digging of that grave that took place over two days, which is what we believe to be the case. Or what makes it more likely that to be the favoured hypothesis is because there's narrowing time frames. So, if you recall, there's only a 51 minute period of him entering into the forest, parking the vehicle, okay, and him going into the woods, obviously engaging in setting up a picnic, suggesting something that was happened during that period coming away, having killed her, tried to administer the first aid, according to his account. Yeah, that didn't happen. And then come back to the van, collect his spade, have a bit of deliberation, going back. It's just implausible you would dig that grave in that complex way within that collapse in time frame. If you're going to suggest that in between all of that you change your shoes during a period of panic, it's completely collapsing that time frame again even further to what you had previously. So the likelihood of that is significantly less. Right. That's a bit that I would say that sits around each of those. But again, as much as that's my observation, that's something we need to work with the experts around the archaeology, the botany, the pathology, to actually overlap what my view would be around that footwear. The footwear that we've got recovered, we have recovered from him, zigzag. You gotta be a boot and a gym shoe. In terms of trainers and locks, in terms of boots, um, his work boots. So they are the a little at ridge detail, so I to make a direct comparison. They are enough to say they are consistent with those two sets. Okay, can't you go collect it? Ooh, wait, did he throw away? No, can't. he probably cleaned them though. And he works in there often, so... It's a footwear. Yeah, no, well, interestingly, some of that footwear was concealed under items within his address. Um, so I would be fairly confident that, that collectively and holistically when you consider this, they are likely to correct footwear. Today's meeting is predominantly around the secret events which Brian is going through to check for the accuracy before we're now seven weeks before court. The day before Kenny was cute. Quick question. 
Oh, no, I'll do it after. Never mind. At 3.35, and he turns up at his house. Let's see what he's wearing. Trainers. He's got those Reebok trainers on. He's got a spade. And that distinctive black panel on the side of the van that helped the member of the public identify it. Right. So everyone, in his defence case statement, he's saying that he goes up on the 21st of April, he goes up to that area to walk the dog and he drives up there to bed his brakes in because he's just had his brakes done. So at 1954, just been out with eggs, the dog had tea and now there's a match on to just chilling. But we know different, don't we? That's him passing the last CCTV opportunity towards the forest and he passes over at 20.13. It then takes him up until about... 2032 to arrive at well, where the Dexter. burial site is. So he's had from 2032, just doing some rough calculations, 2032 to 2131, so give or take an hour at the site to dig the hole. And then that gives him about 18 minutes or so, 19 minutes or so to then get back. And if you just go for and to hit that camera, then return it. So what we've done is we've timed the journeys so we know how long it takes between that camera site and the dig site, having got out on foot, walked from where he parked, and then timed it all, and it, it's given him about an hour at the dig site. So he re uh, reattaches, turns his van back on, about 22.03. And there's his van. That's CCTV. And here arrives Katie. Poor Katie, walking into this month long That's plan. From across the road, so her going into the front door. Which you don't ever catch him doing because he always enters around the back. Until he comes back and the stuff's on the doorstep. But yeah. Which in that time he uh, conveniently comes through the mm. front door. So Katie's phone travels even though his doesn't. And again we can't see footwear or anything like that. But we can see that they're both in the van. Last sighting on CCTV of Katie alive at 9.50. So, Birthfield's van, seen parked in the lay-by on Hull House Lane by our member of the public, which you've got on the drone footage. Bone travelling back down. So, this time we've got the photo. So, Dave's done the same bit of work. Dave, do you want to talk through that one? The previous shot, it's a two minute drive to where he parks up, 90 second walk to where Katie was buried. I've simply worked out and then works out he's had 42 minutes at the dig site to then get back to these camera sites. Maybe he's coming home. So all this <coughs> minutes of coming back and then messaging her. What are you up to? And she says, just out on a walk, what about you? Well, she does notes. He does. Right, go on. Talk us through this, Tom. Sure, in that six minutes of like frantic in between WhatsApp notes, WhatsApp notes, WhatsApp notes. So, as referred to earlier, we're saying that this is him amending those notes that he'd written two or three weeks ago, right. for example, changing morning to afternoon and changing the odd emoji, that type of thing. When she turns it off, when, when, so it, when, when he turns it off, turns off, it's at his house. Yeah, and it, that's the last time it can turn off. Yeah, and that's actually inside his house. Yeah. And there's not really more to say about that, is there? No. Switched off and Switched we don't obviously know what happens to it. He says he burns it on the fire. And then he's creating his messages to Kate, isn't he? These aren't pretty, these are written at the time. Yeah, he's just, ty he's just typing them. It's like, who do you, like, you gotta be careful who you really be trusting. This is insane. Trying to make it look good, isn't he? And then this is the voice. This is too much. This is long, drawn out, all type of like. Mail that we got at the time was it? His acting skills. I think we should play this to the court. I think we've mentioned that to him, but I'll write it down again just in case. You can embed that. Oh, yeah, they can do that. <laughs> 100 pages to go, everyone. So he's continuing with his messages to her, just phone me when you can. You've turned your phone off again, just know when you're ready to talk out here. I support you in any way I can, love you, remember that. And another voicemail message from him. Well, what type of psychopath do it take to 
You know what I'm saying? To like, to go somewhere else, send a text, come back, turn that phone off, reply to the, t- like, what? Okay. That's the more impactive one. Yeah. That's when he says, what do you want me to do? Kids are ringing, I haven't got a clue. Let's keep, let's keep the ring whenever you can. I don't have to be like this, we can sort it out. Whatever help you need, whatever you need from me, I'm not that or anybody else. I just need to know you're safe and where you're going, that's all. Um, I don't want to be wrong at the dog today, can I? Kids with me, mate, I don't, I don't, just, just let me know what's happening, I, I ain't got a clue. This is the real message. This is, bro is really out here trying to win an Academy Golden Globe. Like, this is insane. Like, this is, this is. It's, it's just psychopath behavior. And we need to be certain that this is the only time he's done this. So, 1728 is calling Katie. And I love you, it's crazy. 1746 is message. How's your day been? Not too good. I'm fed up. How's your day been? Yeah, my day's been good. I'm home now. Work was great as always. And then we see Jenny arrive at um, Burfield's house. Jenny's on to him. She knows. And this is from the body cam footage when the cops turn up to talk to him. Oh, uh, that's when this, this fan, her family went. And the jig was up. Thank you all very much. You've all worked ridiculously hard on this job and that is proof of where we're up to. So keep going and thank you all. It'll take five minutes because it's a rough, rough ride that. Andrew Burfield's M tri- trial. Andrew Burfield changed his plea to guilty three days into his trial for killing Katie Kenyon, who was from Padium. Burfield had claimed he killed Katie by accident. Yesterday, he changed his plea. To guilty. The judge told the 51 year old that he should prepare himself that he might die in jail. Has been jailed for a minimum of 32 years for her murder. Today, with yeah. Murfield starting a life sentence, the profound loss and permanent harm that Murfield had caused to Katie Kenyon's children would never be erased. 32 years minimum. The family have also asked me to personally thank every person who's been involved in the case to bring Katie's killer to justice. They also think it's important to express who Katie was and the family have given me a few words that I'm now going to read on their behalf. Katie's a happy, loving mum of two. She had a whole life ahead of her. Katie was beautiful and silly. She had a truly beautiful soul. She always surrounded herself with children, her own and anybody else's who wanted to join in. She would take kids and the dogs everywhere with her. She'd even try to set up summer camp for the local children so they had something to do and somewhere to go. She loved the outdoors and she loved people. We miss her. We miss her very much beyond words and we will never get to express our loss. To me, Katie was a funny, caring soul who was loved by many and also loved many. Um, as a sister though, we were quite argumentative as well. But Katie looked like she had a great life going for herself. She was out here having a great time at life. I suppose that's just sister love, yeah. <laughs> Mine's just the same as yours. Yeah. Yeah, to me, just funny, silly, beautiful. The best mum to her kids. Yeah, she, she lived for her children. And her, the dog. And the dog. <laughs> Don't forget the dog. Bro, I ain't even thinking about her kids. But yeah, that were a laugh. It what do you do with that goofy dog. Sh- Everybody else. Yeah, no doors. And how much do you miss her? Oh, 
millions. Then have the nurse to send a message. Your kids are asking questions like, bro, shut. Bro, you're doing too much. You already done too much. What is called? It's called. They call. 32 years ain't enough. Yeah. Just took the words out of my mouth. Just no words to describe and stuff. No. It hurts. Even like, you think, oh, it's a bit first birthday, first Christmas. I it's every day. It'll be, yeah, it I is every day. I don't think it will be first birthday and first Christmas. It'll be every birthday, it is every, day. every Christmas, every milestone, and then every day today. I mean, obviously when I go. Yeah, definitely. R.I.P.'s in the chat. R.I.P.'s in the comments for Katie. She ain't deserve this at all. <laughs> that's that's insane. She look at this. I should walk the dogs. It, 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 it's me then because it was always me and Katie walking them dogs. Mm, it's me. It's, it's, it's just, just everyday me. things. Yeah. I wake up in the morning and Katie's pictures there, and I just I get to wake up and live my life, and she's she's not here anymore. If someone you know, if someone you know, family or friend that is going through what Katie did, please contact the police or request Claire's Law Disclosure. The police are there to help Katie's family. Yeah, man. R.I.P. to Katie. Condolences from me and behalf of the TLO family, the Litwin family, our our support and love is going towards y'all, man. That's fucked up. 100%. I'm gone.